Yeah, look at uh, nowadays. We have young girls as young as nine years old. That is when they're starting their periods. There's a probability that by the time this girl reaches the child, you know, bearing age, they'll be suffering from fibroids. Why do I say this? You know, we are shedding an egg on a, uh, uh, on a monthly basis, right? So if you start as early as nine years old, by the time you get to like maybe 20 on, or your early 20s, you'll have shed so many eggs. Hi, my name is Robbie Omondi. Welcome back to Life360. Now, in my recent interactions with a good friend of mine, Dr. Faith Kemunto, she happened to mention something called uterine fibroids. Now, I've heard so much about fibroids. I've had people who have talked to people who have fibroids. I've talked to patients who have recovered or rather have had surgeries to remove fibroids. But listening to her and knowing about uterine fibroids, this was a new phenomenon. And I asked her, why not? share it with my audience and so I recorded her and I want you guys to learn so much more about uterine fibroids so let's listen in. Thank you for this opportunity. My name is Kemunto Mageria. I am a fertility advocate working with Myra IVF Center. Yeah, so uh, I would love to discuss about uterine fibroids as one of the causes of uh, female infertility. From the word itself uterine that is the uterus and fibroids. Now fibroids are non-cancerous growths that grow in or on, that is inside or outside the uterus. So these fibroids, or rather these growths, can actually cause a female to be infertile. How? Uh, growths inside the uterus, uh, normally within the range of, we have a normal range of these growths, the ones that cannot affect the infertility, <clears throat> but abnormal growths, whereby we have like a diameter ranging between uh, uh, 3 centimeters to 20 centimeters. Yes. Now, uh, I don't know whether you are aware, outside here, we can have a fibroid that is as big as the size of a watermelon. So definitely, if you have just a conservative, you know, uh, check out on how a size of a watermelon looks like and you see this is a growth that is within the uterus definitely fertility or rather fertilization will not occur naturally so in such a scenario we always have uh, surgical procedures either for removal of these fibroids or we have just uh, you know medicines so that they can suppress the size of this fibroid in scenarios whereby the fibroid is you know larger than three centimeters of diameter it means this one is really suppressing the growth of the embryo or the zygote. And so uh, fertilization or rather fertilization has already occurred. It basically means that you know, this baby will not be carried to term. So we always do uh, some surgical procedures like myomectomy. Myomectomy is a procedure whereby the removal of that fibroid is done without affecting the uterus. We also have uh, an advanced surgical procedure that is done and it's called hysteroscopy. This hysteroscopy, once it has been done, uh, there is no way this uh, individual, rather this lady, will still sire a kid in a natural way as opposed to myomectomy. In myomectomy, once the removal has been done, you see we haven't affected the uterus. So basically that means natural conception can occur. But in a scenario whereby we are doing the hysteroscopy, we'll have to uh, like assist, the, we'll have to come up with a better uh, therapy of reproduction to these individuals. And that is where now we come with IVF, in vitro fertilization. So we have uh, individuals who can actually conceive uh, during the first trimester, you know, whenever they are going for their ANC, they find out that they have these growths. So most of the times, there will be miscarriages up to this time. And in a scenario whereby they already have the baby or they have conceived, and the fibroids pose to be like, you know, risk factors to the mother. Now that is where we do medical termination of the baby so as to save the mother. Yeah, because advanced fibroids, whereas the individual is pregnant, can be a risk factor too the mother yeah and the child as well because uh, i don't know whether i'd mentioned before that uh, what causes fibroids is at times is the history you know your family history can be one of the causes of the uterine fibroids 
obesity, lifestyle, you know, diseases like, you know, drinking also can actually cause this fibroid. Because uh, alcohol intake, smoking and, you know, use of drugs affects other functions of the body, like, you know, psychological functions, any other function within your system. Once it has been, you know, compromised, it will definitely trickle down to the reproductive system and so make your uterine wall or the lining to be compromised as well such that this growth will be either higher or there's a continuation of the growth, the, the fibroid growth. So what basically uh, other signs that you know will prompt you to go to the clinician are heavy bleeding. And then for individuals who start their puberty at an early age, they're at a higher chance of getting fibroids. Yeah, look at uh, nowadays, we have young girls as young as nine years old, that is when they're starting their periods. There's a probability that by the time this girl reaches the child you know, bearing age, they'll be suffering from fibroids. Why do I say this? You know, a child bearing age, it means your ovaries. You know, uh, on a, on a, during your menstruation, your ovaries, you know, we are shedding an egg on a, uh, uh, on a monthly basis, right? So if you start as early as nine years old, by the time you get to like maybe 20 on, or your early 20s, you'll have shed so many eggs within that time, as opposed to an individual who started their puberty probably at 13 years of age, right? So these uh, individuals have a higher risk of having uterine fibroids. And then for an individual who, da who has like heavy bleeding, you know this heavy bleeding, it's basically, you know our ovaries are at the fallopian tube, right? Now, whenever you're having like um, a fibroid, this fibroid, as I told you, can press the fallopian tube. You know how fallopian tube are like the size of spaghetti, that one strand of spaghetti. That's how small the fallopian tube looks like huh? when you just have a conservative look on, on the same. So you can imagine an egg being trapped within that fallopian tube. If you have a uterus, uh, if you have a fibroid growing inside or outside the uterus, it will definitely press the fibroid, the, press the you, the the fallopian tube. So once it has been pressed, releasing of that egg, you know, as uh, your menstrual, it will definitely be very uh, painful and there will be like, you know, prolonged uh, periods or prolonged bleeding. So that is another sign. Once you visit the clinician, we'll undertake hormonal tests. Away from hormonal tests, we also do scans, ultrasound, diagnosis for you to check whether you have the fibroid yeah by the way so to say you know we have so many growths within our our uterus that actually cause uh, infertility but these uterine fibroids are the highest uh, they, they contribute to the highest percentage of infertility and then there is always a difference between this uh, growth and so how do you differentiate this one can only be done through the hormonal test that is the estrogen levels that are actually checked and also the ultrasound so you check so that you can actually see does this uterus is it the the we have cysts we have fibroids we have ovarian cysts different types of ovarian cysts we have different types of uh, you know, these endos, your endometrium or rather your uterine wall mm -hmm. sheds of some mucoid mm -hmm. things that end up forming growth. I hope you learned something about uterine fibroids as much as I did. And if you would like to learn much more about same content in diverse ways, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. And I'll definitely share more information that will enrich our health and make us better in our lives. Until next time, this is Life360. Bye-bye.